Hello, I'm attorney Scott Lesowitz, and I'm going to break down with you what the jury actually found in the Carroll versus Trump civil litigation. I'm filming this late, so I'm not going to bother putting on a dress shirt, and the best you can hope for is that I'm at least wearing a pair of shorts. All right, now due to the you know serious nature of this case, um, I want to be mature in this video, so before we get to the heart of it, let me get some of my immaturity out. You know, uh, Donald Trump's penis used to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. That was until the librarian said to him, hey, get your penis out of that book. And even though there was only one cause of action for battery, the special verdict form asks the jury whether or not Carol proved by a preponderance of the evidence whether Trump committed three different types of conduct that would constitute battery. Okay, so the verdict form first asked whether or not Carol proved that Trump raped her, and the jury there answered no. So under New York law, rape would be an act of actual penetration with Trump's penis. It can be just a little bit of penetration uh, under an act of forced compulsion. But then the jury was asked whether or not Carol sufficiently proved that Trump sexually abused her, her and here the jury answered yes. What does sexually abused mean under New York law? Well, under New York law, that would mean essentially that Trump forcibly touched an intimate part of Carol's body for his sexual gratification. Then the jury found that Carol was injured by the battery and awarded her $2 million in actual damages. The jury also found that Trump acted maliciously and awarded $20,000 of punitive damages on this claim. All right, so now we'll be moving on to defamation, and I will work especially hard now on my maturity. Um, it's, you know, it's difficult when on a scale of 0 to 100, your maturity level is a 69. So the interesting thing here on the defamation findings is that the jury found, by clear and convincing evidence, that Trump acted with mal actual malice in defaming Carol. Now, clear and convincing evidence is a higher standard of proof than just preponderance of the evidence, which is more likely than not, but clear and convincing evidence is less than the criminal beyond a reasonable doubt sta uh, standard. And as for actual malice, that would mean that Trump either knowingly lied about Carol or acted with reckless disregard of the truth. Now, because the verdict form doesn't break down the different statements that were at issue that Trump made, we don't know which statements the verdict is based off of uh, among the ones that he was, you know, alleged to have, have done. Uh, but since Trump denied essentially the entire account of Carol regarding the incident, this doesn't seem to me to be legally inconsistent with the finding that there was a sexual abuse but not rape. And in general, courts are reluctant to find that a verdict is hopelessly inconsistent. And then the jury awarded $2.7 million in actual damages for the defamation and found he acted maliciously, awarded $280,000 of punitive damages here. And I assume they picked that number because it brought the whole judgment up to $5 million. That's all I got to say about this. Uh, hope that was helpful. Hope I brought some clarity that I think may have been lacking in some of the news coverage, especially since the, for some reason, the verdict form wasn't released onto the, the court's document system until pretty late in the day. 